Hello, this is Bob Gray Sr. Welcome to Ministry Moments. And uh, if you have not subscribed, I hope you will. Ministry Moments YouTube, Bob Gray Sr. And go ahead and subscribe. That way you can listen to it. That time messed up. I guess it's all right. Uh, that way you can listen to it at your leisure. But three o'clock Central Time live and uh, Ministry Moments YouTube, Bob Gray Sr. You can also go to Ministry Moments Podcast, your favorite podcast supplier. And you can subscribe there. Also, solvechurchproblems.com. Subscribe there. There's a lot of things in there, great tools there that you can put in your toolbox that'll be a, a blessing to you. Well, today, uh, Ministry Moments, I want to talk to you about PACE, P A C E, PACE. We are in this for the long haul. Um, I remember in early 70s, a uh, graduate of House Anderson went to, I believe it was St. Louis, and uh, and got a, a a real popular Anita Bryant, who it was, to come and to be the main person. He was going to have a big day, got a convention center. And the guy did. He had 5,000 people show up. He promoted it and pushed it. And Anita Bryant came and gave testimony and sang and so on. And boy, he was, he was flying high, but the next week he had 25 in attendance. And I don't think he, the church even exists to this in this day, but I'm just saying to you, this is, you're in this for the long haul. So don't think that you're going to overnight just to have, uh, have a tremendous impact because it's not going to, it's not going to happen. That The big churches, Averaged about one and a half back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, about one and a half growth per Sunday. Uh, and thank God for the growth, but you, you have to understand it's just, it's not, you got to pace yourself. So, with that in mind, let me talk to you about it. Number one, do not force ministry birth. Do not force ministry birth. Don't, don't do it. You say, well, I got to have a Spanish. I got to have Edgecombe Slow. I've got to have bus. I've got to have this. I've got to have that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do not force ministry births. Number two, do not start a ministry to reach people you're not reaching already. Do not start a ministry to reach people you are not reaching already. One of the best examples I can think of is Mrs. Rose O'Brien, First Baptist Church of Hammond, under Brother Hiles. She started winning Spanish people to Christ. And because of that, it created a need. And uh, the thing began to grow, and it grew from soul winning. So do not start a ministry to reach people you're not already reaching. And so now that became a, the leading Spanish ministry in America after, after a while. Uh, all right, I said, number one, do not force ministry births. Don't do it. Number two, do not start a ministry to reach people you are not already reaching. Soul winning will produce a need. And when you win enough souls, baptize enough people at a, at a part of society, it's going to create, we had Ashley Slow ministry. What a blessing it was. What a blessing. And we'd run 25 or 30, wasn't gigantic, but it started out because we read, led one Ashley Slow person to Christ. And that got us into a home and in several homes. And we were able to lead people to Christ. And they'd bring visitors all the time. Uh, I said, number one, do not force ministry burst. Don't do it. Don't do it. Number two, do not start a ministry to reach people you're not already reaching. Number three, do not hire staff to build your work, build at work, then hire staff. Let me say it again. Do not hire staff to build your work. Build a work, then hire your staff. I remember the day when it when people, pastors would say, I'm going I'm to hire this guy from Hiles Anderson and give him a room. And he's got one year to earn his salary. That, that's not how you do it. That is not how you do it. It's not how Brother Howes did it. It's not how Dr. Lee Robertson did it. It's not how Curtis Hudson did it. It's just not the way that they did it. Uh, and, and Tom Malone didn't do it that way. Uh, so I said, number one, do not force ministry births. Don't do it. Don't, and don't let peer pressure. It'd be, well, my friend's got this Spanish ministry. I guess I ought to have one. He's got the bus ministry. I ought to have one. Don't do that. Number two, do not start a ministry to reach people you're not already reaching. Number three, do not hire staff to build your work, build a work, then hire staff. So let, let the soul winning, winning people, baptizing people, create a, a need. Uh, number four, numbers produce needs, which demands of itself leadership. Numbers produce needs. 
which demands leadership of it in itself. So when you get to winning souls, you win people, you win people to Christ, you baptize them, you're going to all of a sudden have a segment of society that you've got to help to be able to minister to. But it was created because of soul winning and baptizing great numbers. So number one, do not force ministry birth. Number two, do not start a ministry to reach people you're not already reaching. Number three, do not hire staff to build your work, build a work, then hire staff. Next, numbers produce needs which demand in and of itself a leader. You've got to have a leader now. And what happened? Soul winning produced it. Baptisms produced it. Number five, do not build based on projections. Do not build based on projections. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Well, boy, we're running 200. I believe, I believe next year we'll run 400. Let's build an auditorium with seat 400. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, we built because our people came to the point and said, preacher, we've got to do something. Cars are driving off the parking lot. We don't have any place for it. We've got to build. We have to build. Well, that way, let's face it, they're going to have to pay for it. And uh, you may be there and you may not be there, but they'll have to pay for it. Better for it to come from them than come from, from you. So I'm talking about pace. This is a marathon. It's not a 100-yard 100 100 sprint. This is a pace. Uh, a decathlon, if you please. I said, number one, do not force ministry births. Just because you somebody else has a ministry, you feel uh, you need to have that ministry. That's peer pressure, and it's not going to work for you. Number two, do not start a ministry to reach people you're not already reaching. Number three, do not hire staff to build your work, build a work, and then hire staff. Number four, numbers produce needs which demand a leader. You went in souls. Now you've got a segment of society, of your uh, population, that you've got to help. But where did it come from? Soul winning. You led them to Christ, and you ended up uh, baptizing them. And uh, they created a need. Number five, do not build based on projection. Don't do that. Number six, of all this is so important here. New budget, financial budgets, should be the previous year's actual numbers. New budgets. I'm talking about financial budget should be the previous year's actuals. Um, don't again, it's a, you project. We're going to run a thousand. That's what we're going to run. You don't know that. You, if you're running 500, uh, then I'd suggest you you let the demand of what you what you've got going uh, cause you to do something. But don't do it just because you feel like projection. You feel like at the rate we're going now. Uh, it will be seven years of feast and seven years of phantom, famine. Well, I, the Joseph principle, it's going to be there. You're going to have seven great years and you'll have seven poor years. Uh, so new um, financial budgets should be based on previous year's actuals. What was the actual income last year? Let that be your budget for this year. If you'll do it that way, uh, it'll it'll mean a lot more. Uh, and and you, you won't be as depressed about what's going on as you are. Well, I projected this and that didn't happen. I guess God's left us. God hadn't left you. You just didn't, you weren't thinking ahead. Talking about pace now. Number seven, work and compare. Well, this is so important here. Work and compare year to year stats, not week to week stats. Uh, don't, don't do week to week. Do year to year. Uh, and that's exactly what I would do. And I would go back and look at the manpower a year ago. Look at uh, what happened on Labor Day last year uh, and try to come up with a pattern of attack for this, this coming year. So look and compare year-to-year -year stats, not week-to-week. -week. We're talking about pace. Pace yourself. You're in this for the long haul. The only reason you're going to leave here and go somewhere else is because, well, I just didn't hit a 1,000. And, and who? And quit worrying about what your college thinks and or your friends think and your peer pressures think. Quit worrying about that. Uh, that way you can rejoice when they have great days and they'll rejoice when you have great days, but it's not going to be the same. Uh, learn to pace yourself. Do not force ministry births. Do not start a ministry to reach people you're not reaching already. Number three, do not hire staff to build your work, build a work, then hire staff. Number four, numbers produce needs, which demands a leader. Number five, do not build based on projections. Don't live in fantasy world. Number six, new budget, financial budget should be based on the previous year's actual money, the actuals from last year. And then the last point, look and compare year to year stats, not week to week. I hope it helped you. And uh, every Friday, three o'clock central time, join us. It'll be brief. It'll not be elongated. You'll be, you'll be uh, uh, in and out of here before you know it. And uh, maybe we can learn something of what's happened so we can win our generation 
to the Lord. It don't tell me it can't be done because it can be done. And so have a great weekend. Win people to Christ. Get people lined up for Sunday. Have a great weekend.